Welcome to Come Follow Me. Today we're talking about Mosiah 29. Okay, so what we decided this week is there's so much information in all of these chapters that we're going to do separate videos for them. So we'll just do Mosiah 29 first because we're having a change of government here. All right, this is one of those parallels of the Book of Mormon with our time. Because what did they do? They came over from a foreign land to preserve themselves. They lived for several hundred years under a king, right? And now they're changing their government and it's going to become a constitutional type of government. And so on the table here, we have some uh, materials that we use in our home to le learn and understand the Constitution better. First of all, the Constitution. <laughs> you have to have the Constitution if you're going to talk about if it. You can't, if you don't know the Constitution, none of the rest of this helps you, right? So this Constitution, to me, um, this was described to me years ago as your best friend. This is your best friend. This is what helps you to protect your liberties and your freedoms, your God-given rights. Your rights don't come from government. They don't come from another person. They come from your creator. They come from God. And this really lays it out well. The men who put together the Constitution, we're taught that they were set apart by God to do so, that he took some of the best of his time. Now, the Constitution was written a long time ago. And some people would tell you that because it was written so long ago that it doesn't really fit our society anymore and so it should be rewritten. That is outdated. That is outdated, right. Which is not true. It's not true because the principles are true. And if a principle is true, it's always true. Remember the scripture teaches God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So are his principles. These are good principles. But if you want to understand it better, because we have the seven articles of the Constitution and we have 27 amendments. And in this book, The Making of America, it's written by W. Cleon Skousen. And he takes the history of the Constitution and each of the different articles and amendments and he helps to describe and explain what they were meant to do. He gives you the words of the Founding Fathers as they were putting together the Constitution, why they decided what they decided. So this book really opens your eyes to understanding why they did what they did here in the Constitution. This book here, The 5,000 Year Leap, is also written by Dr. Skousen. And what he did was he, after all of his studying of the Constitution, he drew the principles out of it that he felt were in there. And there's 28 principles in there. And so we're going to talk about those today. One of the things that we'll include on the blog is just, it's a PDF that has all of the 28 principles on it. It's... <laughs> It gets pretty small, but they're all on here just to help you know what they are. Now, just because you can read that sentence doesn't mean you totally understand that principle. If you want to really understand these principles, get into Dr. Skousen's book, The 5,000 Year Leap. And it's written in a fairly simple form. There may be words you have to look up. I, from time to time, have to go find my dictionary and look up a word because he does um, use words sometimes that I don't know or that I don't, or I want to make sure I understand it. Same way as, as when you read your scriptures. I think I know what that word means, but you go look it up and your depth of understanding increases. So these three resources, I think, are vital to each of us. This is our Constitution, and it was written and brought into law in 1791. It is not outdated because the principles are true, and you can learn about its principles in the 5,000-year leap. Now, one of the challenges is, how do I know if something somebody is teaching me is true? You go to your standard, right? This is your standard. If you can find it in the scriptures, the Bible, the Book of Mormon, then it is a true principle. If it is not supported by your standard works, by your scriptures, the principle is not true. And you know that you can then discard it. This is the way to not be deceived by false teachings and ideologies. And we'll talk about that this week too, but in a separate video. So one of the things we've done this week, um, if you were to go onto the website for the, where you can get the Making of America a 5,000 Year Leap, it's nccs.net, and we'll put that into our uh, description comments and on the blog. They actually have a post on there that takes all these 28 principles and they found a scripture in the Bible to back up all of them. Well, I gave myself the challenge as a teacher, as a mother, to find those 28 principles in this volume, in my Book of Mormon. And guess what? They're here, and almost all of them, almost all of them are in Mosiah 29. Because this is where they set up 
their free government. That's our parallel to the setup of our free government. And so we're just going to go through here and we're going to talk about some of the principles from the 5,000 year leap that we find here in the Book of Mormon that Mosiah helps them to set up. Now, he didn't just come up with this. He obviously had been studying his scripture. This is very similar to the government set up by Moses, the law and, and the judges, which they'd moved away from by the time Nephi and Lehi left Jerusalem. But for a time, they were ruled by judges in Israel as well. Okay? So, we're going to start off and just find one of the first principles in here in verse 5. Miranda, you want to talk about that one? Yes, so this is Mosiah talking to his people. Mm -hmm. And I love it because when he's speaking to them, he says, Oh, you my people, or my brethren, for I esteem you as such. And we have to remember, Mosiah is the king. Right. But as you look at this, there's a humility there, but also... He assumes them as their brother or as his equal. Right. And this is where we get the fact that all men are created equal. Right. And this is brought out there. Right. All men are created equal. And equal doesn't mean we all have the same things. It doesn't mean we all look alike. It doesn't even mean that you're born into the same social status. You might be born into a poor family. You might be born into a rich family. You might be born into a middle class family. So how is that equal? We're equal before God. We're all his children. We're equal before the law. The law should treat us the same regardless of our circumstance. The law applies to you the same way as it applies to me, the same way as it applies to daddy. Nobody gets a special privilege if we're all created equal. Right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. So you can see that right there. All men are created equal. And you even see it more in Alma chapter 1 because it literally says they're equal. <laughs> so um, let's go on now. Another place, another principle that we found as we were talking about this is in verse 12 and what I did actually because I have these all written in my margins I've been studying this for a lot of years and I write them in and I've got them on my my gospel library app and I said okay I'm not going to tell you on this verse you guys read it you tell me which principle you think this goes with and Emma came up with this one for us so this is in chapter 29 of Mosiah verse 12 uh, well, verse 12 says, Now is it better that a man should be judged of God than of man? For the judgments of God are always just, but the judgments of man are not always just. And principle 9 says, To protect a man's rights, God has revealed certain principles of divine law. And so it just applies just because it talks about how, um, you know, God sent principles for us to judge man, but it's a righteous judgment instead of just, you know, judging him because of the actions. It's a righteous judgment because you know more about the background. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that divine law is part of what helps to make righteous judgment, right? Good. And some of us thought that principle five went with it. Yeah, And five could certainly go with it as well. So we'll let them take a look at that one. Daddy, you were going to take uh, verse 14 for us. Yes. <clears throat> 14 um, is, uh, and even I myself have labored with all the power and facilities which I possess to teach you the commandments of God and establish peace throughout the land. And so that uh, takes verse one or principle, principle one and principle nine. And principle one says the only uh, reliable basis for sound government and just human relations is natural law, which is God's law. Well, his commandments, right? His commandments, yes. And then in, also in principle nine, it says uh, to protect man's rights, God has revealed certain principles of divine law as commandments. Right. And so uh, in both of those, uh, it uh, is found in verse 14. Right, because it even talks about their right to their property and things like that as well. So, yes. So a, a righteous government is always based on God's commandments or natural law. When the founders talked about natural law, they were talking about the, the God of nature or Heavenly Father. 
And so you have to kind of understand how they use those words. But we're talking about laws and commandments made by Heavenly Father. All right, then verse 17. Catherine, you were going to bring out a principle in there. Yes, verse 17, it says, Behold, how much iniquity doth one wicked king cause to be committed. Yea, and what great destruction. Mm -hmm. And it goes with um, principle 22. And it says, A free people should be governed by law and not by the whims of men. Right. And I just think it's so perfect because it brings out King Noah. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much the only wicked king that it um, brings out in the Book of Mormon. Right. But how wicked he was. Mm -hmm. And he just led his people down to destruction. Right. So but when you're led by law, yeah. uh, you, like, it's not one person who has an influence on everybody. It's the law. Right. If they're, if they're good and righteous laws, if they're based on Heavenly Father's commandments, then you're right. And the other thing you'll notice here is that we actually see this principle illustrated when it was broken, when it wasn't being lived, and how that was very destructive to the people when we were being led by the whims of an unrighteous king. Let's see. Joseph, you were going to bring something out in verse 21. Yes, I was. And 21 says, And behold, now I say unto you, ye cannot dethrone an iniquitous king, save it be through much contention and the shedding of much blood. Which uh, the principle that goes with this is principle 11. And just to be sure I say this right. Uh, it says the majority of uh, the people may alter or abolish a government which has become tyrannical. Right. And that often does require much blood. If we think about our own revolution, we see war for several years trying to be, be rid of our tyrant ruler. Right. So. Right. And they had to go through the same thing to, to for Noah as well, didn't they? All right. Good. Um, I'm going to take a couple of verses here, 26 and 27, and this is really, really important. They were determined to make their decisions and, and do things by the voice of the people. And I want you to hear these verses as well as the principles that go with them. It says, Now it is not common that the voice of the people desireth anything contrary to that which is right. I think we need to remember that. If we do things by the voice of the people, if we're basically righteous... The voice of the people, the majority, will not want what is contrary to that which is right. But it is common for the lesser part of the people to desire that which is not right. Therefore this shall ye observe and make it your law to do your business by the voice of the people. And then he gives a warning. And this is an important warning because a good government and a good people can fall. We watch it happen twice in the Book of Mormon. He says, if the time comes that the voice of the people doth choose iniquity, then is the time that the judgments of God will come upon you. Yea, then is the time he will visit you with great destruction, even as he has hitherto visited this land. All right, so those are very important principles. Where do we find them in these 28 principles? A couple of places. One uh, is in principle 20, efficiency and dispatch. Require, require government to operate according to the will of the majority or the voice of the people. But then it adds, but constitutional provisions must be made to protect the rights of the minority. So you have a minor, majority rule, but with provisions for the minorities to still maintain their rights. We don't take away people's rights. And then we come back to uh, principle two, which is simply that a free people cannot survive under a Republican constitution, unless they remain virtuous and morally strong. We absolutely must remain righteous, virtuous and morally strong in order to be led by God's laws. Okay? Now, Joseph, you were going to take a look at um, verse 28. 28, right after that. Real <clears throat> fast, something I really love is it says here, 
The only keepers are the people, which is something George Washington said. You were going to give this later, so you need to stay here. And stay so, here. um, it's just, it's so true because it's the people that are making the rules, really. I mean, the government might pass a law or something, but it's the people, they're the ones that, like, they're the ones that put the people in office. They're the ones that choose who represents you. Mm -hmm. So the keepers are the people. Right. The Constitution, it's only keepers the people. And so if we let combinations get above us, we're in trouble, aren't we? And that is a warning we get all throughout here. All right, Joseph, you were doing 28? Yes. And uh, 28 says, And now if, if ye have judges, and they do not judge, judge you according to the law, which has been given ye, given ye uh, can cause that they may be judged of a higher judge right so here he's setting up like our checks and balances right and the principle that goes with this is principle 17 okay and it says a system of checks and balances should be adopted to prevent the um, abuse of power. Right. right. Because with these checks and balances, you can't do something and not have your consequence come in for it. Mm -hmm. It's putting you accountable to the people you are yeah. serving. Well, and there's a way to put a check on it. You're not following it, and here's how we can put a check on it. Here's how we can stop it and keep it balanced. And I think that's important. And that really leads into the next verse in mm -hmm. 29. It says, If your higher judges do not judge righteous judgments, ye shall cause that a small number of your lower judges be gathered together, and they shall judge your higher judges according to the voice of the people. So there's part of that check and balance. But we also have one more principle I want to talk about as we finish off this chapter. And that's uh, principle 21, which says, Strong local, local self-government is the keystone to preserving human freedom. The farther away the ruling gets from the people, the less we preserve our freedoms. If it's right here in your own town, in your own neighborhood, you generally know the people who are in office. You've got, you might even know where they live. You, know? you might be able to go knock on the door and say, Hey, Joe, can I talk to you about this thing you did last night in city council, right? And so th there's, there's more accountability to the people because you know them. They're your neighbors. They're your friends. You're less likely to get put back in office when you're doing things that shouldn't be done because they see it right there on the local level. So that local government is super, super important. And as, as we lose that, we lose a lot of our freedom. So... That is, there is so much. I think I found eight things between verses 22 and 23. I think we found eight or 10 <laughs> principles that go in those two verses alone. So there's so much. And we invite you to spend some time. This is a book that will take you a long time to read. If you really stop and think about it, it'll take you a weekend, maybe a week, if you just read. Either way, you get some good information in you. The Constitution, we stopped studying in our schools in 1957. And so the people, as a people, we don't really understand the Constitution. And if you don't understand the Constitution, it's like not knowing your best friend. And if you don't know your best friend, how can you help? How can you be helped by them, right? How are you a friend if you, if you exactly. don't know your best friend? Exactly. So uh, if, you, if you are familiar with this 5,000-year leap, this will be very exciting to you. But whether you are or not, take some time to get to know what your protections are by law. Because the Lord expects you to have your rights, but he also expects you to defend them. And so take a little time in this. See what other principles you can find. Make a whole chart of it. Write them in your footnotes. Whatever it takes in your sidelines. Uh, put them into your gospel library app uh, with little tags, you know. So that you can begin to understand the parallel between us and the things the Lord would have you have for your protections. Okay? So that's the end of Mosiah 29. We'll do a second video here on some of the rest of this week's Come Follow Me lesson. If you've enjoyed our videos, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And don't forget to find and follow us on Facebook.